Hello guys, it's me Jamie and welcome back to another video. So, in today's video, I actually am bringing you a reading vlog. Uh, I'm so excited because in this specific reading vlog, I am going to be reading both Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom one after the other. Now, I've actually read Six of Crows before. I really, really enjoyed it. I actually rated it four stars because I did believe that it was a little bit overhyped. And I also actually rated it four stars because I hadn't read the Grisha trilogy yet. And so I felt like I was lacking a little bit of knowledge about the world. I would have like appreciated knowing a little bit more about the world before like diving straight into Six of Crows. I feel like it really would have enhanced my reading experience. And so now that I have read that trilogy, I feel like I am ready to go straight back into this one. But yeah, I'm gonna annotate this one. I'm gonna have such a good reread. And then I'm gonna go straight onto Crooked Kingdom, which I have actually never read. So this one I'm really excited for. And also I feel like it could be so fun because I'm doing it with Caitlin, my friend, Kate Literature. She is also vlogging her experience so I'll link her vlog down below but we're basically doing like a buddy read of the entire duology but like in person because we live together so that's just gonna be so fun I feel like we can update it together in each other's vlogs I'm just so excited so if you're watching this vlog definitely watch her vlog as well I will link it down below so you can click and watch that after you've finished mine I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get stuck into this one tonight uh, it's currently two in the afternoon on Wednesday so I feel like I'm gonna go and have some lunch and maybe, I'm actually in the middle of another book right now, but I'm gonna have some lunch, maybe read a little bit more of my other book and then start this one tonight and get all cozy. So I also will let you know, there will be a few spoilers in this vlog for sure, but I will make sure to like let you know when a spoiler is coming up so you can mute the video or kind of skip to a different part. So you can still watch this if you haven't read the books either but just so you know, there will be a few spoilers, but I'll make sure to let you know and like warn you. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for being here and watching and I will get started with the vlog now. Okay, so I have just come downstairs and I'm officially gonna start Six of Crows. I have popcorn and a Diet Coke, which is like perfect reading snacks. And I have my annotation pencil case, the classic. By the way, the new BTS comeback looks amazing. The teaser was released today. But yeah, I honestly can't remember a lot about it. I remember my initial thoughts was that I loved Matthias and Nina. I loved their storyline. I did think Kaz was overrated, but I loved the girls. That's literally all I remember. And then I don't really remember having many opinions about Jesper and Wylan, but it's gonna be interesting to see how I feel now. I'm excited. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start now. Okay, some thoughts on the opening chapter because it seems to be so controversial. I feel like the opening chapter kind of reminds me of like when you watch a movie and then the first scene is like something that gives heaps of backstory and then you cut to the main characters and you never see the characters from the first scene ever again. For example, in like Game of Thrones, the first scene in the first episode of Game of Thrones, you never see those characters ever again, but it sets the tone of the show and like the mood and the backstory of like what's about to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like it feels very cinematic. You, like giving you like something but not context. Exactly, exactly. Like we basically know that there's some trouble afoot. That's what I feel like the first chapter tells us. And I feel like there's been a lot of people being like, oh, but you know, it doesn't have anything to do. Like juice never comes up ever again. Like why should we care about like this guy's like love for this random ass like Grisha? when we never see them ever again. And I'm like, starting off with like Kaz or something, that's just giving us too much too soon. So I kind of like that it's just like, it's, you know, she's building the world. Yeah, dimension, exactly. layers. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I'm so glad that you agree. I will link this particular ASMR ambience down below because it slaps. Thank you, Caitlin. It's our new fave. I stumbled upon it by chance and like, literally transported into the book exactly anyways um, Stan Kaz. he was a collection of hard lines and tailored edges send tweets hi i just have a message for all the mateus aunties out there also this might be a little bit of spoilers so um i will put put uh the wolf emoji up and so you can mute it when the wolf emoji is up and then unmute when the wolf emoji is gone so there it is. Okay, great. So first of all, I haven't actually got, got into this part of the book yet, but I am up to the bit where Mateus is introduced, which made me think about this and want to talk about it. So basically, 
I don't understand why people hate Mateus so much because I genuinely feel sorry for him. Because yes, the reason that he is horrible to Grisha is because he was brainwashed and raised in an abusive environment that make him believe that Grisha are evil and that they are masters of trickery. So first of all, there's that problem that he has been raised like that. And then slowly with his backstory, you realize that he unlearns all these things that he's been taught by his from his abusive childhood and he develops and he starts to you know he falls in love with Nina who is a Grisha which is a huge step for him a huge step for someone like him then after all that he believes that Nina has tricked him and betrayed him and is then in jail being tortured for like a year and so of course everything that he has been taught when he's a child has now come true in his eyes and he has been tricked by a Grisha so can everyone please relax? Like the amount of stuff that Matthias has gone through for people to then be like, oh, he's my least favorite character because he's really angry. You'd be angry too. Thank you, Caitlin from the sidelines. Thank Mateus, you. Hi. Okay, that was weird. Steve Jobs just cut the, ca he said cut the cameras. <laughs> Did ass cut the cameras. We are not fans. So thanks, Steve. Yeah, that's just, you know, I'm going to take the emoji off now. That's just how I feel. That's my opinion. And honestly, if you don't like Mateus, like literally give me a reason. Give me a counter argument for what I've just said. And then we'll talk. Anyway, um, Stan, Mateus and Nina for clear skin. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Hello, okay, so last night I officially got up to part two of Six of Crows and so now I'm on page 103. It's honestly like I'm enjoying it so much more now than I did when I first read it. I don't know, it's something about this reread. I'm just like really, really having a good time. I've got heaps of tabs already as well, so that's great. I'm sorry for my Mateus rant last night. I just really love him. I think him and Nina are definitely my favorite characters. Like I still love Kaz and Anish so much, but like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I like am so determined to be different but I just love them. They're definitely my favorites. Although I definitely am loving Kaz more on this reread. Not to be that person, but it's really nice having like actors to picture like when I'm reading this in terms of like the TV show that's coming out, the Netflix series. Like it's really cool like being able to picture them as these characters. And like, I still have my like original like, picture of the characters in my mind when I read it. But at the same time, sometimes I'll be like, oh yeah, that's gonna be this person. That's a really fun little thing as well. But yeah, at the moment we have just gotten up. We've just been introduced to Mateus essentially. Like we've only just gotten up to his bit and we haven't met Wylan yet. And we only know a little bit about Jesper. So yeah, I'm having a good time. So I don't really have much else to say. I'll just keep you updated during the day and let you know how I go. And my goal is probably to get to part three. So if I read up to part two last night, I think that's definitely doable, but I will keep you updated. Okay, good morning. It's now Friday. So I actually did end up reading up to part three last night. So now I am on page 185. And I think today I'm just gonna take it really easy. I'm just gonna like lie in bed, no makeup on, and just try and get through more of this. Part two was really fun. Like we really got to see kind of the whole gang come together for the first time. In this book in particular, I definitely feel more like Kaz and Inej and Nina and Mateus have like the stage. Like they're very much the main characters. So I am excited to try and figure out like more about Jesper and Wylan when I do eventually get to Crooked Kingdom. Because yeah, definitely like Wylan especially, I'm just like, sir, like who are you? But I mean, that could just be where I'm at at the moment but I do feel like we spend a lot of time on those other fours like backstories whereas with Jesper and Wyland I'm just like I don't actually know them but yeah I just love this book so much I'm loving it more this time around than I did when I first read it which I know I've said before but like genuinely I'm actually shook about how much I'm enjoying it when I first read it four stars this read literally could be five like it's literally hitting that way but yeah I just can't think of another book where I love like the entire cast of characters so much all of their separate relationships with each other and then their like relationship as a team and and like as a group I'm gonna try and not finish it today but maybe get up to like the last act which I think I can do like I'm nearly at halfway so I don't think it'll be hard to try and read as much of it as possible so I'm gonna stop talking now and that is what I'm going to do I am up to part four of Six of Crows finally it's like 
2 in the afternoon. So I feel like that's pretty good for getting up to the next part. I don't really have much to say. Like I just really enjoyed that part. Like learning more about Nina and Mateus's backstory and like a little bit of Kaz's as well. Like it was just... It was nice. Um, Kaz is such an interesting character. Like when I first read it, I was kind of like, I don't really like him because he's just kind of like good at everything. But then this reread, I've really like acknowledged that like his main flaw is his desire for revenge and his inability to let things go. So I really like reading about Kaz in this new light. It had this whole thing with like Inej where she was like, what do you want? And he was like, I want you. And then he's like, no. And like push those thoughts to the side. And it's like, bro, you can be happy. Like let yourself be happy. And I kind of like that that's a really complicated flaw as opposed to something just like kind of basic and kind of like been like done a thousand times so i'm definitely appreciating kaz in this new light and yeah just really liking it not much else to say so i will update you later once i've read a little bit more okay so i haven't read too much since i last updated i just got up to chapter 22 which is page 273 and we did read my favorite scene which is when they're all in the bakery and nina has like gone to like go find i don't know something for them and basically Inej just tells Mateus how it is and he basically just goes like oh yeah she's just too much and then Inej goes well maybe you're just not enough and it's just so good that's definitely one of my favorite scenes and I remember that scene from when I first read it but yeah we're now off the ship and officially about to get into the actual heist past halfway but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get ready for bed get into some pajamas maybe put on a face mask and continue reading so I will give you any updates if it's necessary but until then I'm just gonna keep reading maybe get an ASMR rooms out I'm not sure good morning wow my hair's a mess also I'm still in my pajamas please don't judge me also it's midday on Sunday so last night I finally finished six of crows I absolutely loved it I gave it five stars this time around I don't really know what was different maybe my headspace but I'm in a messed up headspace at the moment anyway so I really don't know I loved it so much that ending just like hit different I think I like understood it more and I think that really changed my enjoyment of it but yeah that last act is incredible I think I prefer the first half because I really like getting to know the characters and their backstories as opposed to like the action I'm such a character person over action so like while the action was really fun I just preferred getting to know like the crew and stuff before getting into the actual heist but I still loved it I completely tabbed it up there's so many amazing character moments and the book is just so well written as well honestly I feel like this is just the perfect YA fantasy book I know that everyone already knows that but I just feel like it definitely is but yeah I honestly don't have much else to say about it I just really liked it I loved all the characters everything that like I said about it still kind of rings true in all the past clips it's hard because it's not like I've really had that many new discoveries because it was a reread. I just liked it more. So I've basically spent this entire morning like editing videos, which is incredible. I'm very proud of myself, but I think I'm going to continue editing. I've got like four videos to edit, but then after that, I'm finally going to start on Crooked Kingdom. I'm so ready. I do know the big spoiler and I'm not going to mention it here because... I'll just probably talk about it like when I actually get to it in the book but yeah I do already know the big spoiler. I'm really afraid of getting to that point in the book. I am really scared and I know that it will kind of fuck with my emotions a little bit but that's okay. That's okay. I'm ready. I've, I've emotionally prepared myself. It only took me a year since I read the first one to emotionally prepare myself for this one. I'm really excited to see like Kaz and the whole gang kind of team up with an enemy or at least get help from an enemy. I'm really gonna love seeing that particular character being brought down. And I'm also really excited to learn more about Jesper and Wyland and their dynamic. I'm hoping a bit of a relationship will happen, but I'm not sure. And I'm also really excited to spend more time in Kitadam because I really like the idea of just like this really shitty town where everyone's a fucking criminal so i am really excited to spend more time in that world as opposed to like traveling in six of crows i'm excited to get to know more about like Kedadam and like the street politics and stuff like that this book's long it's like over 500 pages but i think i'm ready i'm just gonna continue to edit my videos and like upload them all and kind of schedule i've got like five videos coming up guys i'm so productive but I'm going to keep doing that and then I think I'm going to start this tonight after I've done all that or maybe like start it when I take like a lunch break. But yeah, don't worry. I will keep you updated. I'm really excited. Let's go. Second part of the vlog. Up to part two of Crooked Kingdom. The classic ASMR rooms. 
Caitlin, also reading Hero Kingdom. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> yeah. I could feel lots of breakdowns and coming, and I'm on, like, page 15. Nice. Not to spoil things for Caitlin, who's sitting right next to me, but that Inej chapter right before part two? Stop. That might be what I'm on now. Probably. It will be if it's the only Inej chapter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. The relief when I turned the page and saw it was an Inej chapter. Oh, I know. Never They're just superior. Like They're just superior. Yeah. I was like, my girl's alive. But also, I'm absolutely bloody terrified because their ending. Just wait. Just wait. Mm. Okay, so I read a little bit more of Crooked Kingdom today and I'm maybe at about the halfway point. And like, I hate to say it, I'm finding it really boring. Maybe I just don't actually care about Wylan and Jesper as much as I thought I did. Like, I'm just finding it really boring. Like, I'm kind of having a bit of trouble like figuring out like what's happening. It's just really not catching my attention. Like I thought Six of Crows was just a lot better, which is unfortunate. Like I was not expecting to ha have these feelings towards it. Also, I'm so sorry. I look so ugly. Basically I'm up to this bit now, like a huge plot twist has happened with like Wylan and stuff. And I'm just kind of like, I don't really care. And then there was like these sort of action scenes that were happening where I was just kind of like, I really should be on the edge of my seat right now, but I'm just not. Like I just like don't care. Like it's just so much more underwhelming than Six of Crows. Like, I'm really hoping it gets better towards the end, but, like, basically the first half at the moment has been, like, three stars. Like, not that entertaining. Like, just kind of exhausting to read. Like, I cannot read a lot at once. Like, with Six of Crows, I was reading, like, 150 pages in, like, one sitting. And now I'm just kind of, like, look, well, let's go, like, one chapter at a time. So, yeah, I'm worried that it's going to take me a while to finish this book because I really don't want it to, but it's really not finding it that entertaining. I'm sorry. I'd literally rather be reading a contemporary or a romance right now. So, yeah, not the best, but I'm just going to keep reading. Hopefully the second half gets better. I'll try to read some more tonight and I'll update you when I do, but yeah. Okay, so I am now up to page 337. So I'm this far through. So I'm over halfway now. I just spent like an hour and a half downstairs reading while I left my phone upstairs. Honestly, like the vibes, I was so much more productive. I can't get over it. I need to start doing this more often. But yeah, it's definitely less boring now and exhausting me a little bit less now that I'm in the second half. Although I do have some thoughts about the book as a whole. I'm really loving Inez's chapters for some reason. I feel like Inez's chapters are so much more interesting and so much more suspenseful than everyone else's. I don't really know why that is. I just find her chapters to be the most interesting. Especially because I find that because we've already had a lot of like Inej backstory and stuff like that, I found her chapters were more often than not like present day and I find that to be the most interesting. Although the backstory with Inej and like working at the menagerie was heartbreaking. That is the bit of backstory about all the characters that I found to be the most interesting because it's like the one that like made me feel the most because it made me feel like really disgusting and like sad. I do have a little bit of a problem with how Leigh Bardugo has written Jesper and Wylan. I feel like she is less emotionally invested in those characters and it kind of is translated through her writing. Like I just find that she doesn't care about them as much because I just don't really care that much about Jesper and Wylan's backstory because I feel like they're not three-dimensional enough as characters. I feel like they don't have enough depth. I feel like I might be in the minority with this opinion but honestly like I just can't bring myself to care about them as much as I care about the others. Yeah so before I got past the halfway point I was like yeah this is really sitting at a low three out of five stars like I'm like it's like a two to three stars which is so crazy because obviously Six of the Crows is amazing but now it's more like a high three stars now that it's we've gotten more into the action and yeah I don't know I just it's just kind of not exciting me as much and I really don't like that I find the Jesper and Wylan chapters really boring, but I do. Like, at least when we go into their backstory, like, the action, present day action, when they're, like, with the rest of the characters, I'm like, yes, cool, but, like, when it's just their backstory, I'm like, no offense, but you guys are really boring. I'm gonna read some more of this. I'm just gonna get ready for bed first. And, yeah, I'm gonna try and get to... I'm definitely gonna finish it tomorrow, but I'm gonna try and get to the next part in the book, which will be the last one, part six. And it is exactly, it's exactly 100 pages. So I'm going to try and read another 100 pages tonight. But yeah, we'll see. But it's only like 9.30, so doable. Okay, but I am tired. I'm going to stop talking. Bye. 
Okay, hi guys. So I have about 10 pages left of Crew Kingdom and I'm just gonna talk about it really quickly while I do my makeup because I am going to film some videos today, I think, or at least the intro to some videos. But I probably will be talking about some spoilers in Crooked Kingdom. So I'm going to put an emoji up here and then you can mute it or skip to whenever that emoji isn't shown. Okay, I think it's definitely gotten more interesting, but it's still only like a three stars for me, for sure. So the major things happened, like the major death. It was sad, like even though I knew it was coming, it was still sad, but like I didn't cry or anything. And whether or not that's because I already knew it was coming or because I had kind of checked out a little bit emotionally from this book, I'm not sure. Like, I could definitely feel the tears, like, behind my eyes. Like, if I let myself, then I probably could have cried, but I just was like, eh. I think the action scenes at the end, like, with the whole auction and everything, those were definitely the most interesting scenes in the book so far. And I just really want to thank Inej for, like, carrying this entire book and this entire conclusion on her shoulders. Honestly, what I found sadder than Mateus's death was like the, all the dreads saying goodbye to each other and not being together. You know, like that really kind of shook me when everyone was saying goodbye as opposed to like R.I.P. I absolutely love, love, love that Nikolai made a cameo because while I really don't care for the original Grisha trilogy, Nikolai is definitely someone who... I fell in love with Loki. Okay, the sun's really hurting my eyes. Hang on, I'm just gonna go adjust the lighting a little bit. Okay, that's like marginally better. Yeah, I definitely loved um, Nikolai's cameo. That was one of my favorite parts of the book. And me and Caitlin are like obviously buddy reading it and we were reading it downstairs together. And it was really funny because I'm like slightly ahead of her. And so while I was like reading about Mateus's death, like kind of just like keeping it together, I hear Caitlin go, oh my God, and I was like, okay, how dare you be at the best part of the book while I'm at the worst? There was a moment there where I like fell for one of Lee Bardugo and I guess Kaz Brecher's cheeky tricks where I thought that Wylan was being an absolute wimp and I kind of got mad because I was just like, if this is true and not a trick, then like genuinely Lee Bardugo has done one of her characters so dirty and not paid him the respect that she has spent literally two 500 page books trying to give him. But then of course I fell for it and turns out he was actually all good. So that was just me being an idiot. But at one stage I was like mad. I like highlighted it with my mad color. I'm gonna finish doing my makeup now because I honestly can't think of anything else to say. I'll probably record myself finishing the last 10 pages of Crooked Kingdom but if it's not in the video then it's because I literally didn't have a reaction. And that literally might happen. Like, I've kind of emotionally checked out of this book. Okay, I feel like I'm doing it really dirty. Like, it's good. Like, it still has some really, really incredible moments. But it just doesn't have the magic that Six of Crows had. And I think that's fair. So, yeah. It's not as bad as I'm, like, making it out to be right now. That's it. Okay, so I finished Crooked Kingdom and somehow Inez's like final moments were the bits that sounds like she died like she's fine but like her final scene was like somehow sadder than anything else like that was definitely my favorite moment and like touched me the most emotionally it's so crazy if six of crows was like Nina and Mateus's book then Crooked Kingdom is Inez's book and people are gonna be like you've got that wrong round the wrong way and I'm gonna be like I know I don't care like this is that's just the things that most touch me emotionally I guess yeah like it was good like three stars it's definitely if I am ever going to reread the series I'll probably just reread Six of Crows and then like you know leave this one to sit on my shelves but I still really enjoyed it and like who knows maybe I will reread it and be like oh actually it's a four star book kind of like with Six of Crows I thought it was a four star book then reread it and thought it was a five star book I honestly don't have anything else to say I just really want to thank Inej for like really carrying this story home and making it what it is like I really liked it and it's a shame like you know everyone says this book is really good because you get to learn more about like Wylan and Jesper and like I did like them like I still like them as characters but like I just didn't care enough about them because I don't think Lee Bardugo cared that much about them compared to how much she was obsessed with like Kaz and stuff which is fine like she's obviously like very emotionally attached to Kaz and Inej and those sorts of characters and that's why they're so well fleshed out and so well written and everything but I feel like yeah, Jasper and Wyland just kind of drew the short straw a little bit. Just my personal opinion. 
feel free to disagree that's totally fine but yeah i'm gonna end the vlog here thank you so much for watching yeah let me know if you want me to do more reading vlogs like this where i can dedicate like a vlog to a whole series because i really do enjoy that and like getting to dive a little bit deeper into the story than if i was just reading it in, like a normal reading vlog but yeah that's all for now uh remember to check out caitlin's reading vlog as well we should our vlogs should be up at the same time so definitely check hers out now and again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you very soon in another video bye but she said, Cindy, don't cry.